This Week in Gaming History. Hello! Welcome to This Week in Gaming History. I'm your host, Ancy Pants. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a different setup today. I got Portal 2 on Steam right here. I'm just going to hit play. Launch this sucker. I got Portal 2. It's Portal 2 on This Week in Gaming History. Um, it was a bit of a rough week. Uh-oh, what's going on? <laughs> Record what you just did. I really hope this works. It might not. Let me know if you're not getting any sound or anything. Um, yeah, it was a really rough week. There was only four games and uh, not a lot of options. We, uh, and uh, not a lot of good options, I should say. Uh, we did, uh, like that, uh, Psychonauts also came out this week, but I'm playing it as in the main segment in our favorite games. So that one was off the list. So it made it a really small list. Uh, but Portal 2 came out with two votes as the winner. And then I'm going to play Pitfall a little bit later as well. But for now, uh, yeah, this is Portal 2. Really great game. This could be, like, I could be playing this in our favorite games as well. It's both Grimpen and I love this game. Now, if you've never played it before, it's a puzzle platforming game in first person with a very unique mechanic of shooting portals. You shoot one portal, and then the second portal, and if you go through the first, you come out the second. It's very mind-bending. Uh, it's by Valve, if you've never heard of them. They're the creators of the Half-Life series, uh, and they don't make that many games or franchises. They're basically Portal, Half-Life, and Counter-Strike. Uh, and uh, yeah, this game came out in 2011. Uh, Oh, it's, it might be too loud. Damn it. I don't think there's any way for me to test how loud it is. Oh, well. Uh, just let me know if it's too loud. <laughs> um, but yeah, it came out in 2011. We still haven't seen any kind of sequel for this. I'd love to see a Portal 3. It's overdue for sure. Uh, this It was a sequel to Portal which was just a really short, uh, almost experimental game that Valve included in the orange box with four other games. Uh, and this time they decided to make it in uh, uh, more of a full game. They decided to flesh it out. They knew right when they finished Portal that they wanted to make a Portal 2 and make it more of a full game. Um, it's one of the funniest games ever made, for sure. Uh, they even they they specifically set out to make a comedy game, like a big budget comedy game, which is so rare. And they just they knocked it so far out of the park. It's it's hilarious. Um, it was written by Eric Wolpaw and Jay Pinkerton for the most part. The single player game was Eric Wolpaw has written a lot of video games. He was uh, responsible for starting the game website Old Man Murray. Have you ever seen that? Uh, he's done his work for Double Fine, including Psychonaut, which also came out this week. So two of his crowning achievements came out this week. And he also worked on uh, the new Half-Life game, Alex, um, uh, as well as Jay Pinkerton. He worked on ha Alex as well. Uh, he's uh, like a humorist, a comedic writer. Um, he's written on a bunch of different stuff. Cracked, National Lapoon. Uh, yeah. And then you had Chet Falizek, who uh, also co-created Old Man Murray with uh, Eric Wolpaw. But Chet uh, Falizek just did the um, multiplayer stuff for, yeah, for this one. He wrote all of GLaDOS's lines for the co-op. They added co-op for this game. The first one was just single player. The co-op is so much fun. You play as two different robots. Uh, it, yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> The GLaDOS is just putting through all these trials and you just get destroyed at the end of each one and re-put re together. Um, it had amazing voice talent. Steven Merchant, they got. Uh, the co-creator of The Office, uh, the British Office. Uh, hilarious 
guy, uh, Ricky Jay podcast. Uh, it was perfect casting. They want like they actually wrote the character uh, around Stephen Merchant. You'll hear it. It's the most voiced character in the game. Uh, sort of the main character. Um, but they based they wrote him this character after like hoping well. Uh, they wrote it around Steve Merchant because they just really liked his comedy style of being very nervous, sort of. Um, but they assumed he wouldn't be available. So they actually reached out to the IT crowd people to get Richard Iode. Uh, but then they found out Merchant was interested and they, they were like, oh, sweet. And they just brought him on. And there was over 13,000 lines, uh, not just for Merchant, but overall. Um, and but there was a lot of improvising as well. They gave Merchant a lot of freedom to just improvise. J.K. Simmons does the voice of Kate Johnson, also hilarious, amazing actor. He's been he won the Oscar for Whiplash a couple of years ago. He plays J. Jonah Jameson in the Spider Man movies. Amazing, he does an amazing job in this game. And also, Ellen McLean returns to voice GLaDOS. She did it in the first game and became kind of a, a sensation. Uh, the internet just loved GLaDOS, uh, and so she came back in this one and does such an awesome job. Uh, whereas Portal 1 had only about 7 to 8 people, Portal 2 had 30 to 40. So you can see they like it went from like a very small kind of experiment to a full-fledged game. Um, and it was really different at the beginning. Um, they actually at first weren't even going to use portals. They were going to use uh, a new technology they had made called F-Stop, which... They wouldn't reveal at the time, but they, we know a little bit about it now because it's being used in a different game. And it's like you took pictures of things and then you would like store the uh, the things would become objects that you could store and then you could put them in other things. I don't know. But people apparently liked the F-stop, but fans were just there. Like the testers didn't like the fact that there weren't portals too. So uh, they changed it, of course. Um, but the game was also set in the 50s. There was no Shell. There was no GLaDOS. Shell is, is the main character you play as, who's a silent protagonist. Uh, Cave, it was a story about Cave Johnson uploading himself into an AI and commanding a robotic army. And you just played as some Aperture Science uh, employee. The whole game takes place in Aperture Science Labs. And yeah, you had to fight Cave Johnson, I guess. Um... But yeah, the testers, like I said, missed portals, and they also missed GLaDOS. Everyone kind of went, well, where's GLaDOS? We love GLaDOS. Um, they wanted to add a lot more characters, but they also wanted to keep it really intimate. So I think they did a great job of just having lots, like a few characters with tons of lines that you get to know really well. But they don't have, it's not like a huge cast of characters. Um, but at one point they had they did cut a bunch of stuff. They ha they had different cores. Uh, Stephen Merchant plays one of the cores, and so the cores just had all these kind of quirky personalities. And one of them apparently was like Morgan Freeman from the Shawshank Redemption, and one of them was like uh, Quint from Jaws. And I think those still might be in the game just near the end. The, but they are supposed to have a much bigger expanded role, I guess. Uh, they wanted to add a co-op mode from the start as well, but that also went through lots of changes. At first, you didn't even... Or you played as Shell. Uh, they eventually changed them to robots, but first you played as Shell and Mel, two humans. Uh, and then the robots at one point were going to find artifacts, like human artifacts, which I think would have been a really cool idea. Like GLaDOS would have sent them to find human artifacts, but uh, apparently they just found the story too complicated and people talked over it and stuff and... It just didn't work, but I don't know, that's, that sounds cool to me. Um, so they just kept it really simple. It's GLaDOS directing two robots through puzzles. Um, the puzzles in co-op were way harder. Grimpen and I have played through them, and we were just talking about doing it again on stream. Even though we've already played through them, I guarantee I won't remember any of the answers. They were hard, and, and we got stuck on them a lot, but we beat, we beat all of the co-op, and they're tons of fun. They even at, the, at one point they considered a competitive mode, which I always thought would be amazing to have a portal competitive mode, but apparently they just couldn't get it to work. Um, they in their idea was more it was like I, I I always wanted more of like a kill each other type mode, 
where you try to shoot portals under people and get them to fall out of crazy places. But like, like that would be sweet. Especially if like, say only one person had a portal gun and then there was like five characters that just had to get from one end of a place to another. And it was up to the portal guy, gun guy to just try to shoot a portal here and shoot a portal there and just try to keep sending them back. And then, then if enough time goes by and they're not all over the finish line, then the portal guy wins. That's a great idea, and I just came up with it. And Valve couldn't get anything to work. Come on, guys. Anyway, what their idea was was having a ball. Like you would, you would try to get a ball from one end to the other using portals, and the other team would try to stop using portals. Eh, I guess they, yeah. Apparently, people had like they, uh, they found at the beginning of the game, people had like those goals in mind, like getting the ball to one end to the other and then but very quickly it just descended into complete chaos so they decided not to go with it whatever my idea was better um valve's composer mike moraski is their their go-to composer he did the general music like what you're listening to right now but they also had uh jonathan colton who uh did um the song at the end of the first portal game called still alive and it became kind of an internet sensation so they brought him back to do the credit song for this it's called want you gone um there was dlc as well for just for the co-op element and uh they also um eventually uh, released stuff where you can make your own levels hey alex he says win the portal totally gonna uh, that's you can see there the community chest ch test chambers are and chest chambers. Um, those are all the fan made levels. I've never actually played those. I always thought it would be really fun. It got insanely well reviewed. It sits at a 95 out of 100 on Metacritic. It's considered one of the best games ever made. Ultimately, it's an absolute classic and hilarious. And I'm gonna just jump in and do a new game. So that's, if you had never played the first one, that's the corpse of GLaDOS, who you defeated in the first one. But obviously tons of time has passed since then, and so it's all kind of run down. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> I'm good at gymnastics. Oh. Ah. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> Good. Such a friendly voice. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I've obviously been in suspension for a long time. Oh, God. <laughs> so that's Stephen Merchant there. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 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 
Oh boy. Uh oh, Alex says I can't hear him. Uh oh, is, is the game just really quiet? Or can you not hear it at all? That's what I was afraid of. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Um, oh, geez, because I, I haven't muted. That might be why. I'm a genius. Uh oh, what's going on here? <laughs> what is going on? Better hold on. Better hold on to that feeling because hey. that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got brain damage. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Does any of this make any sense? Now, just tell me. Just say yes. Perfect, says Alex Casey. <laughs> all right, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just missed him kind of bumbling around. Um, one thing, one fact that I learned that I found really interesting is. Uh, the lead animator for all of Wheatley's stuff was Karen Perel, who uh, was um, a veteran Muppet performer. And you can just really see how, like, with how expressive this thing is. You know, it, that, that makes perfect sense. Okay, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you, just, <laughs> you just jumped. But never mind. Say apple. Apple. <laughs> I jumped. Okay, you know what? That's close enough. Just hold tight. <laughs> All reactor core safeguards are now non-functional. Please prepare for reactor core meltdown. Okay, look, I wasn't going to mention this to you, but I'm in pretty hot water here. How are you doing down there? You still holding on? The reserve power ran out, so of course the whole relaxation center stops waking up the bloody test subjects. Hold on, this is a bit tricky. And of course, nobody tells me anything. No, why should you tell me anything? Why should I be kept informed, you know, about the life functions of the 10,000 bloody test subjects I'm supposed to be in charge of? Why? It's close. Can you see? Am I going to make it through? Have I got enough space? Uh -oh. uh, just, just got to get through here. Okay, I just got to concentrate. And whose fault do you think it's going to be when the management comes down here and finds 10,000 flipping vegetables? Alright, so now I hit that one. I hit that one. Okay, listen. We should get our story straight, alright? If anyone asks, and no one's going to ask, don't worry, but if anyone asks, tell them as far as you know, the last time you checked, everyone looked pretty much alive. Alright? Not dead. Okay. Almost there. On the other side of that wall is one of the old testing tracks. There's a piece of equipment in there that we're going to need to get out of here. I, I think this is a docking station. Get ready. Good news. That is not a docking station. So there's one mystery solved. Uh, I'm going to attempt a manual override on this wall. Could get a bit technical. Hold on. Almost there. Remember, you're looking for a gun that makes holes, not bullet holes. But don't worry, you'll figure it out. Seriously, do hold on this time. There we go. Now, I'll be honest, you are probably in no fit state to run this particular type of cognitive gauntlet. But um, at least you're a good jumper. So you got that <laughs> <laughs> jumping on your side. Oh. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties so due to circumstances of potentially apocalyptic significance beyond our control. However, thanks to emergency testing protocols, testing can done. continue. These pre-recorded messages will provide instructional and motivational support so that science can still be done, even in the event of environmental, social, economic, or structural collapse. The portal will open, and I'm emergency sorry. testing will begin in three, two, one.
Oriental. Cube and button-based testing remains an important tool for science, even in a dire emergency. If cube and button-based testing caused this emergency, don't worry. The odds of this happening twice are very slim. Please note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grill will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through. If you feel liquid running down your neck, relax, lie on your back, and apply immediate pressure to your temples. You are simply experiencing a rare reaction in which the material emancipation grill may have emancipated the ear tubes inside your head. <laughs> oh, it's good to know, at least. Because of the technical difficulties we are currently experiencing, your test environment is unsupervised. Before re-entering a relaxation vault at the conclusion of testing, please take a moment to write down the results of your test. An Aperture Science Reintegration Associate will revive you for an interview when society has been rebuilt. I took lots of considerations. I assumed society would collapse at some point. If the Earth is currently governed by a manner of animal king, sending a cloud, or other governing body that either refuses to, or is incapable of listening to it. <laughs> Sentient cloud. Hey, hey! You made it! Hey, Wheatley. There should be a, a portal device on that podium over there. I can't see it though. Maybe it fell off. Do I? Oh! oh. Hello? Can you see the portal gun? Also, are you alive? If that's important, should have asked that first. <laughs> um, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work on the assumption that you're still alive, and I'm just going to wait for you up ahead. I'll wait. I'll wait one hour, then I'll come back. And assuming I can locate your dead body, I'll bury you. All right? <laughs> Brilliant. Go team! See you in an hour, hopefully. If you're not dead. Poor old guy. that it gives some titles for it. Whoa. This game is so tricky. It gives some titles for like... Yeah, portal opening, portal closing. That's bizarre.
Lucky shot, says Alex. This is, yeah. Some emergency testing may require Remember prolonged interaction with lethal military androids. Shot. Rest assured that all lethal military androids have been taught to read and provided with one copy of the laws of robotics to share. Good. If you feel that a lethal military android has not respected your rights as detailed in the laws of robotics, please note it on your self-reporting form. A future Aperture Science Entitlement Associate will initiate the appropriate grievance filing paperwork. Especially the middle section of the game where it becomes like you don't really do puzzles, it's just all these broken down rooms and you're trying to get from one to the other. There's not a lot of places you can even put This next them. test is very dangerous. To help you remain tranquil in the face of almost certain death, smooth jazz will be deployed in three, two, one. sections you just like it's just finding that one piece of white wall hole that you can shoot Because this message is pre-recorded, any observations related to your performance are speculation on our part. Please disregard any undeserved compliments. Like a bunch of lore with these all these graffiti things, but I never really got into it. Couldn't tell you. There's like a guy named the Red Thing, I think. If the Enrichment Center is currently being bombarded with fireballs, meteorites, or other objects from space, please avoid unsheltered testing areas wherever a lack of shelter from space debris does not appear to be a deliberate part of the test.
Well done. The Enrichment Center reminds you that although hey, circumstances may appear bleak, you are not alone. All aperture right, science so personality constructs will remain functional in apocalyptic <laughs> low power environments of as few as 1.1 volts. I'm pretty sure, yeah. If, if she got the diabetes from cake. If she has cake diabetes, then it's a total lie. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I don't know. This next test applies the principles oh, of momentum to movement through portals. If the laws of physics no longer apply in the future, God help you. <laughs> God help us. Teaching me the momentum stuff now. If you are a non-employee who has discovered this facility amid the ruins of civilization, welcome. Humor and remember, here. <laughs> testing is the future, and the future starts with you. Yeah, they're all about science and aperture. Good work getting this far, future starter. That said, if you are simple-minded, old, or irradiated in such a way that the future should not start with you, please return to your primitive tribe and send back someone better qualified for testing. Never beaten Portal 2, but me and you for years. How long is the campaign? Uh, it's, all, it's like six hours, right? It's not too long. That's totally worth it. The ending's fantastic. I won't spoil it, but there's some awesome stuff. And the co-op's insanely fun. We've never had the chance to try that. To ensure that sufficient power remains for core testing protocols, all safety devices have been disabled. The Enrichment Center respects your right to have questions or concerns about this policy. I'm playing it because it came out this week in gaming history. Hey! Oi, oi! I'm up here! About nine years ago, I think, now? Oh, brilliant! You did find a portal gun! Oh, the... Do you know what? It just goes to show, people with brain damage are the real heroes in the end, aren't they, <laughs> so at the end of the true. day? Brave. Brave. Pop a portal on that wall behind me there, and I'll meet you on the other side of the room. I 
never been called a hero. Just before. pop a portal right behind me there and come on through to the other side. Pop a little portal just there, all right behind me, and come on through. Come on through. <laughs> it's just. He has so many lines and you just ignore him. Come on through to the other side. Okay, listen, let me lay something on you here. It's pretty heavy. They told me never, never, ever to disengage myself from my management rail or I would die. But we're out of options here. So get ready to catch me, all right, on the off chance that I'm not dead the moment I pop off this thing. On three. Ready? One. Two. Three! That's high. It's it's too high, isn't it, really, that? All right, going on three just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay, ready? One. Catch me, catch me, catch me, catch me! Ow! Ow. <laughs> I am not dead. I'm not dead! <laughs> Plug me into that stick on the wall over there, yeah? And I'll show you something. You'll be impressed by this. It's such a good job with Wheatley's animations. It's so expressive. Go on, just jam me in it. Um... Yeah, I can't do it if you're watching. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not, I'm not joking. Could you just turn around for a second? No, I want to see it. I can't. All right, you can turn around now. Bam! Secret panel. Not open while your back was turned. Pick me up. Well, let's get out of here. And off we go. Look at this! No rail to tell us where to go! Oh, this is brilliant. We can go wherever we want. Just hold on though, where are we going? Hang on, let me just get my bearings. Um, Did you get Danny Mac to the part just with follow the J. Rail, Simmons? As Cave Johnson? Oh no. Yes! Hello, no, we're not stopping. Don't make eye contact, whatever you do. No, thanks, we're good. Appreciate it. Keep moving, keep moving. J.K. Simmons was so good in this game. Probably ought to bring you up to speed on something right now. In order to escape, we're going to have to go through her chamber, and she will probably kill us if if she's um, awake. Glados. Okay, I'm gonna lay my cards on the table. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go in there. Don't, don't go in there. She, she's off. She's off. Don't panic over. She's off. All fine. On we go. There she is. What a nasty piece of work she was. Honestly, like a proper maniac. Do you know who ended up? Uh, do you know who ended up taking her down in the end? You're not gonna believe this. A human. I know. I know. I wouldn't have believed either. Apparently, this human escaped, and uh, nobody's seen him since. Then there was a sort of long chunk of time where um, absolutely nothing happened. And then there's us escaping now, so um, that's pretty much the whole story. You're up to speed. Don't touch it. Okay, down these stairs. Jump! This, actually, look at it. That is quite a, that's quite a distance, isn't it? Ah! Oh, still held! Still being held. You did, that's a great job. You've applied the grit. We're all fine. That's tremendous. It'd be weird to hear Richard Diode as this guy. That's who they were going to get. Ah! I just, sorry, I just looked down. I do not recommend it. Ah! I've just done it again. It would have totally worked. This is the main breaker room. Look for a switch that says escape pod. All right, don't touch anything else. Not interested in anything else. Don't touch anything else. Don't, don't even look at anything else. Just, well, obviously you've got to look at everything else to, to find the escape pod, but as soon as you look at something and it doesn't say escape pod, look at something else, look at the next thing, all right? But don't touch anything else or look at anything. Well, look at other things, but don't. You understand. Can you see it anywhere? I can't see it anywhere. Uh, oh, tell you what, yeah. plug me in and I'll turn the lights on. Let there be light. That's uh, God, just quoting God. Oh, look at that, turning. God. Ominous. But probably fine, as long as it doesn't start, you know, moving up. Now, escape pod, escape pod, 
It's, it's moving up. Okay. Okay. No, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. This should slow it down. No, makes it go faster. Uh oh. Power up initiated. Okay, don't panic. All right, stop panicking. Uh, I can, I can still stop this. Um, uh, oh, there's, a, there's a password. Okay, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just hack. It's not a problem. Not a problem. A A A A A. Um. Okay. A A A A A C. Wait, did I do beat the jump head? Start writing these down. Power up, complete. I don't. Okay, okay, okay. Listen. All right. New plan. Act natural. Act natural. We've done nothing wrong. Hello. Oh, it's you. You know her. It's been a long time. How have you been? I've been really busy. You know, after you murdered me. You did what? Ah. Oh no! No, 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 no! Oh no, 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 no! Ah. Okay, look, we both said a lot of things that you're going to regret. But I think we can put our differences behind us. For science, you monster. I will say, though, that since you went to all the trouble of waking me up, you must really, really love to test. I love it too. There's just one small thing we need to take care of first. We both just love testing so much. And science. And monsters. <laughs> Here we are, the incinerator room. Be careful not to trip over any parts of me that didn't get completely burned when you threw them down here. The dual portal device should be around here somewhere. Once you find it, we can start testing, just like old time. So old. There it is. Hold on. There. Good. You have a dual portal device. There should be a way back to the testing area up ahead. Once testing starts, I'm required by protocol to keep interaction with you to a minimum. Luckily, we haven't started testing yet. This will be our only chance to talk. Here, let me get that for you. Do you know the biggest lesson I learned from what you did? I discovered I have a sort of black box quick save feature. In the event of a catastrophic failure, the last two minutes of my life are preserved for analysis. I was able, well, forced really, to relive you killing me again and again, forever. You know, if you'd done that to somebody else, they might devote their existence to exacting revenge. Luckily, I'm a bigger person than that. I'm happy to put this all behind us and get back to work. After all, we've got a lot to do, and only 60 more years to do it. More or less. I don't have the actuarial tables in front of me. I'll just move that out of the way for you. This place really is a wreck. But the important thing is you're back. With me. And now I'm on to all your little tricks. So there's nothing to stop us from testing. For the rest of your life. After that, who knows? I might take up a hobby. Reanimating the dead, maybe. <laughs> That's a fun hobby. Okay. I almost get back into it quarantine but that's too busy
Sorry about the mess. I've really let the place go since you killed me. By the way, thanks for that. Sarcasm self-test complete. Oh good, that's back online. I'll start getting everything else working while you perform this first simple test, which involves deadly lasers and how test subjects react when locked in a room with deadly lasers. Valuable science. Not bad. I forgot how good you are at this. You should pace yourself though. We have a lot of tests to do. Yeah, this, this just makes me want to play through the whole thing again. This next test involves discouragement redirection cubes. I just finished building them before you had your, well, episode. So now we'll both get to see how they work. There should be one in the corner. Well done. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. <laughs> yeah. Don't let that horrible person thing discourage you. It's just a data point. If it makes you feel any better, science has now validated your birth mother's decision to abandon you on a doorstep. Congratulations. Not on the test. Most people emerge from suspension terribly undernourished. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack on a few pounds. Oh, GLaDOS and her backhanded compliments.
One moment. You are navigating these test chambers faster than I can build them. So feel free to slow down and do whatever it is you do when you're not destroying this facility. Give you credit. I guess you are listening to me. But for the record, you don't have to go that slowly. Waddle over to the elevator and we'll continue the testing. <laughs> hey, Basculins. Finally, tune in, keep forgetting. Oh, that's all good. Nice to see ya. Kind of a different show these days. We do, uh, Grimpin comes in, we do, uh, we just do... This next test involves the Aperture Science Aerial Faith Plate. It was part of an initiative to investigate how well test subjects could solve problems when they were catapulted into space. Results were highly informative. They could not. Good luck. Man, between this and Psychonauts, I've been playing a lot of funny games. Here's an interesting fact. You're not breathing real air. It's too expensive to pump this far down. We just take carbon dioxide out of a room, freshen it up a little, and pump it back in. So you'll be breathing the same room full of air for the rest of your life. I thought that was interesting. Oh, yeah, if Aston says the game sounds louder than me, yeah, sorry, man. Um... Okay, yeah, I can fix it. It's just going to be a weird thing like this. Um, I've been all right. I've been pretty good. Haven't been sick, so that's good. And nobody I know, nobody I know has gotten too sick except for one of our viewers. Let's see what the next she's, test is. She's recovering oh, now. Advanced aerial face plates. Well, have fun soaring through the air without a care in the world. I have to go to the wing that was made entirely of glass and pick up 15 acres so of broken glass by myself. How are you doing? How's the puppet? He's doing good too. We're just socially distancing. He comes in, uh, yeah, he escapes in every, every show at the beginning.
doing pretty good. We're playing Isaac Rebirth. Oh, it's too bad Grimpen's not here. That's that's probably Grimpen's favorite game of all time. Grimpen would be happy to hear that. Oh, sorry. I'm still cleaning out the test chambers, so sometimes there's still trash in them. Standing around, smelling and being useless. Try to avoid the garbage hurtling towards you. Yeah, have you just like started playing it? Like for the first time, or are you like a veteran? Snap Vasquez nearly snapped his controller out of anger. <laughs> and yes, it's his first time. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't couldn't really get into I I tried. Grimpen tried to get me into Binding of Isaac, and I put probably like 15 hours into it, but it's too random. It drives me nuts too. Vasquez is above the big button? Oh, is there Oh Duh. Nicely observed, Vasculins. Yeah, that's awesome. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around <laughs> being useless? Yes. That was a metaphor. <laughs> I, so. I was actually talking about you. Yeah. And I'm sorry. You didn't react at the time, so I was worried it sailed right over your head, which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just the randomness that that kills me. And you can be having like Did an amazingly you know good run, and then something just more randomly happens. And you're screwed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why that went off. Anyway, just an interesting science fact. Did I accidentally fizzle that before you could complete the test? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and grab another one. Oh, no. I fizzled <laughs> that one too. It. Oh well. We have warehouses full of the things. Absolutely worthless. I'm happy to get rid of them. Thank you. 
Is this my first time? No, uh, I played it a long, long time ago. So it's it's yeah, it's been a it's been long enough that like I barely remember it. But it's uh, gaming history this week. It came out uh, nine years ago this week. It's so good. Like, I could probably put it on a list of favorite games. I love it a lot. Played this, I assume, Bastions. Grimpa and I were just talking today about how how overdue it is for a, a third level game. We really would love. We were, we were saying if that if uh, if Portal Three was a VR exclusive, that would be like insanely tempting like that would probably sell us on the VR every test chamber is equipped with an emancipation grill at its exit so that test subjects cannot smuggle test objects out of the test area this one is broken don't take anything with you portal VR would be insane though Beskin says, I feel like a lot of people would be mad. It's true, but they just released Half-Life Alex on VR. This next VR test exclusive. involves emancipation grills. Remember, I told you about them in the last test area that did not have one. And yeah, I feel like they're just, they're like only going to make VR games from now on. Oh no, the turbines again. I have to go. Wait, this next test does require some explanation. Let me give you the fast version. There, if you have any questions, just remember what I said in slow motion. Test on your own recognizance. I'll be right back. says apparently PS5 is going to be $500 so I might just buy or build a gaming, P gaming PC instead yeah sure a little more expensive but you get a lot more out of it it's true yeah I, that's what I did about like 8 years ago now or so and the gaming PC I built that's what's running this right now like it still works it, like it can't run the newest stuff anymore but it's uh it was a really good investment. But I think also, for a, for a while, I bet you there's going to be a lot of dual releases. Like, it'll be released on PS4 and PS5. It's weird. It, PS5 is going to be pretty interesting. It's me. Especially with all the well, I'm back. coronavirus stuff. The aerial faith played in here is sending a distress That's signal. Sweetly up there? You broke it. Didn't you? Uh oh. There. Try it now. What do you thought happened, right? I was just lying there. You thought I was done. <laughs> this plate must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. I'll add a few zeros to the maximum weight. 
You look great, by the way. Very healthy. Thanks, guys. Try it now. They merged, right? Couldn't believe it either. <laughs> you seem to have defeated its load-bearing capacity. Well done. I'll just lower the ceiling. Oh. Oh. I'm missing something. Oh, there you go. People saying now that Last of Us will probably be a PS5 uh, launch title. I wouldn't be surprised. But they'll totally release it on PS4 as well. Wow, that's so trippy. Proud of me. Look at you, sailing through the air majestically, like an eagle, piloting a blimp. Raskin says a lot of exclusives might come out just to get people to buy the console instead of PC. But Steam is made by Valve, so hopefully if Half-Life 3 Portal 3 comes out, it won't be an exclusive. Well, yeah, it'll probably... Well, yeah, yeah, interesting. It's a good question. Like, would it just come out on PC? I guess it depends if it's uh, all VR or not. But yeah, it's always it always comes down to exclusives for me. That's always what makes me buy a console or not. Like, I won't buy a PS5 or an Xbox One until there's like a game that's exclusive for one of them that I'm like, I gotta play that game. It looks so good. Except for Nintendo consoles. I always buy Nintendo consoles on launch because I just know that Enjoy this next test. I want to play. I'm going to go to the surface. It's a beautiful day out. Yesterday I saw a deer. Aww. If you solve this next test, maybe I'll let you ride an elevator all the way up to the break room. And I'll tell you about the time I saw a deer again. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. A 
real treat, GLaDOS. Ah. Up here, thanks. <laughs> That's great. Now, how do I get a laser? I didn't see the deer today. Oh. I did see some humans. Oh. But with you here, I've got more test subjects than I'll ever need. Nice. What do you think GLaDOS does in her free time? <laughs> well, she said earlier, um, after she was done testing with me, she might pick up a hobby like reanimating the dead. So I think that's, that's probably... She probably reanimates the dead, yeah. These bridges are made from natural light that I pump in from the surface. If you rubbed your cheek on one, it would be like standing outside with the sun shining on your face. <laughs> it would also set your hair on fire, so don't <laughs> actually do it. But, I don't know, maybe she does other types of science. She said she saw humans, not alive ones. That's a good point.
But yeah, she probably also does just various types of science, I bet. Mostly on humans. Human science. Excellent. You're a predator, and these tests are your prey. <laughs> That's me. Speaking of which, I was researching sharks for an upcoming test. Do you know who else murders people who are only trying to help them? Did you guess sharks? Because that's wrong. The correct answer is nobody. Nobody but you is that pointlessly cruel. <laughs> Raskin says, if it's something Herb is simple and taking you a while, it might help. Absolutely. Yeah. We're always good for backseat gaming here. We used to use that uh, category, but then I keep I always forget to put in categories now. Good news. I figured out what to do with all the money I save recycling your one room full of air. When you die, I'm going to laminate your skeleton and pose you in the lobby. <laughs> that way future generations can learn from you how not to have your unfortunate bone structure. Oh. That's probably another one of her hobbies. Perfect. The door's malfunctioning. I guess somebody's going to have to repair that too. No, don't get up. I'll be right back. Don't touch anything. Hey, hey! Up here! I found some bird eggs up here. Just dropped them into the door mechanism. Shut it right down. I ah! Bird! 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 bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's probably the bird in it that laid the eggs. Livid. Okay, look, the point is, we're going to break out of here, all right? Very soon, I promise, I promise. I just have to figure out how to break us out of here. Here she comes. Keep te Just keep testing. Remember, you never saw me. Never saw me. I went and spoke with the door mainframe. Let's just say he won't be, well, living anymore. <laughs> anyway, back to testing. The answers are always simple at Portal, and yet somehow it's still so easy to get stuck. I guess that's why it always makes you feel smart, because you're like, ah, oh, got it. That was hard. You did so well. I'm going to note this on your file in the commendation section. Oh, there's lots of room here. Did well. Enough.
This next test involves turrets. You remember them, right? They're the pale spherical things that are full of bullets. Oh wait, that's you in five seconds. Good luck. <laughs> I was thinking you're not Then. Aperture science. To maintain a constant testing cycle, I simulate daylight at all hours and add adrenal vapor to your oxygen supply. So you may be confused about the passage of time. The point is, yesterday was your birthday. I thought you'd want to know. <laughs> That's so bad. But you're going to be dead in 60 years? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been working on a belated birthday present for you. Well, more of a belated birthday medical procedure. <laughs> oh. Well, technically, it's a medical experiment. <laughs> What's important is it's a present. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess you can call anything a present in that case. That jumpsuit you're wearing looks stupid. That's not me talking. It's right here in your file. <laughs> on other people, it looks fine. But right here, a scientist has noted that on you, it looks stupid. Well, what does a neckbearded old engineer know about fashion? He probably... Oh, wait. It's a she. Still, what does she know? Oh, wait. It says she has a medical degree. In fashion. From France. <laughs> Okay. Medical degree of fashion. Nap time. Searching. Oh. 
see me for like a second when I do that. Whoa. Hmm, I should like block them. Instead of the portal. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, shoot. I put the wrong portal there. Uh oh, I'm in trouble now. Shell can't run, unfortunately. Oh! Oh no, no, no. Oh shoot. There we go, that's fast right here. Don't die, says that friends. It's too late. Oh, what the? Why are you turning around? Shopping down. Um. I'm going through the list of test subjects in cryogenic storage. I managed to find two with your last name. A man and a woman. So that's interesting. It's a small world. Interesting. My parents? surprise waiting for you after this next test. Telling you would spoil the surprise. So I'll just give you a hint. It involves meeting two people you haven't seen in a long time. What? Oh, that's a trick. Whoa. I thought it was just a laser. Vaskin says also about getting a PC, I could get mods for games that I play. Not to get overpowered, but to not to get overpowered, but to enhance the gameplay. That it was I, when I played Fallout 4. That was huge. It like completely changed the game in in so many better ways. Yeah, like yeah. For certain games, it makes like a huge difference. The Fallout 4 mods were amazing. There's like a jetpack. All these amazing radio stations are so good. They had hosts and everything. I 
Like even this game's pretty different on PC because there's all the community made levels. So there's just so many more levels you can do. It says this next test was designed by one of Aperture's Nobel Prize winners. It doesn't say what the prize was for. Well, I know it wasn't for being immune to neurotoxin. <laughs> That's a good prize, though. Nobel Prize in being <laughs> immune to neurotoxin. The problem with games with mods, like Fallout 4 and Skyrim, is that there are rules and restrictions to the mods. On PC? Or on the, yeah, I know on the Xbox and PS4 they had uh, restrictions on them. But on PC, yeah, it, like you can just do so much cool stuff. This is a cool puzzle. So you got that going. And then from over here, I'm going to pull the bridge out from under it so that it falls onto the switch. I bet you think I forgot about your surprise. I didn't. In fact, we're headed to your surprise right now. After all these years, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. As it says, like if you were playing on a console. Yeah, exactly. I want all community mods, not the same mod rebranded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it's, it was a cool idea that they tried to even do it. Like they, like they tried to put community mods on the Xbox and PS4, but yeah, they're nothing compared to the PC ones. There was like a, oh, there was one that did um, like all these different weather effects. You'd get sandstorms and like radiation storms. So good. There are so many good monsters that just like enhance the world. It just Initiating just surprise fun. in three, two, one. Oh. I made it all up. What? Surprise. Oh, oh. Oh, come on. If it makes you feel any better, they abandoned you at birth. So I very seriously doubt they even want to see you. So cool. that guy.
What? <laughs> oh, I need the bridge. Oh no! What are you doing? Hmm. This one's crazy. Esclans wonders how much control GLaDOS has over the facility. I know, it seems like she has a lot of control, but then she, like, some things she just can't seem to do. Good game. Don't even 
need these portals. I feel awful about that surprise. Tell you what. Let's give your parents a call right now. The birth parents you are trying to reach do not love you. Please hang up. <laughs> oh, that's sad. But impressive. Maybe they worked at the phone company. What? What just happened? Why did I... Why did these get moved? Baskin says, wow, when I'm about to type something, you specifically say it. It's great minds. <laughs> I'm in your hey, brain, how's man. it going? I talked my way onto the old Nanobot work crew rebuilding this shaft. They are really small. So, oh. I know, Jerry. No, I'm on a break, mate. On a break. Ah! Just hang in there for five more... What, Jerry? You can't fire me for that. <laughs> yes, Jerry. Or maybe your prejudiced work site should have accommodated a nanobot of my size. Thanks for the hate crime, Jer. See you in court, mate. Anyway, look, just hang in there for, for five more chambers. Well, you know the old formula. Comedy equals tragedy plus time. And you have been asleep for a while. So I guess it's actually pretty funny when you do the math. It's true. Can't argue with her on that one. That's great. First, I gotta find the cube. There it is. Okay, so there's the first one.
Oops, I forgot to bring my cube. That time it wasn't even close. there. Guess I needed to get to this platform. Oops, no. Yeah, wailed it right. <laughs> that was perfect. God, what? Uh, supposed to kill them first. <laughs> oh, GLaDOS. Oh, <laughs> this starts to be right here. dilemma and I came up with a solution that I honestly think works out best for one of both of us <laughs> one of both of us <laughs> carefully chosen words
federal regulations require me to warn you that this next test chamber is looking pretty good. <laughs> that's right. The facility is completely operational again. Ah, that's great. Puzzles are getting trickier now. two lasers and one laser. Three lasers into one laser. Wait a Go see you, human sea bastards. Thanks for hanging out. It's great to see you. Shoot all three through a portal. Hey, it's two of them. I think it's gotta be this. Oh, maybe I can just move it closer up. Oh, wait, no. So we need this one. Is that, is this, like it's got a 
part below it that I can't portal gun. And this one. Oh, can I do it? No, that wouldn't help. It's only one laser. Uh, oh, wait, what if I make... Okay. This one here, and put this... There, and this... Hey, that's totally how you do it. That's awesome! I love this game. Ow, 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 ow! I think these test chambers look even better than they did before. It was easy, really. You just have to look at things objectively, see what you don't need anymore, and trim out the fat. I've got a surprise for you after this next test. Do Not you? a fake, tragic surprise <laughs> like last time. A real surprise with tragic consequences. Oh, okay. And real confetti this time. The good stuff. Our last bag. <laughs> Part of me is going to miss it. But at the end of the day, it was just taking up space. Doing a little Marie condoing. Oh! What's going on? Who turned off the lights? Hey, buddy! I'm speaking in an accent that is beyond her range of hearing. Look, metal ball. I can hear you. Run! I don't need to do the voice. Run! Run! Whoa! plans that I've got in store, we're going to shut down her turret production line, all right, turn off her neurotoxin, and then confront Again, though, for the moment, run! Come on, come on! Come on, over here, this way! The irony is you're almost at the last test. <laughs> of course we're right. Here it is. Why don't you just do it? Trust me. It's an easier way out than whatever asinine plan your friend came up with. Oh, what? How, how stupid does she think we are? Oh! It's a weird place for a loading screen. Right. 
And that's where I'm going to stop this one. I'm still going to just look at one more game here. Uh, pretty quick. So stay tuned, and uh, we're going to jump into Pitfall in one second here. Just going to switch games. Whoa. Hey, and I'm back. Hey, Tiny Observer. Nice to see you again. Yeah, you caught us on our Gaming History Day. Oh, whoops. I left it here. Uh, this is Pitfall. Video game designed by David Crane for the Atari 266600, <laughs> apparently. Can't talk today. And released by Activision in 1982. Pretty crazy. Activision. They've been around for so long. It was one of the best selling games on the Atari 2600. Yeah, it sold in insanely well. And I've never played it before. Let's give it a try. So, what is it? You can go down. This is Pitfall Harry, that's his name. Good, how are you? This is our gaming history day, so it's we're going way back. This is one of the early like oldest games we've played on the show probably. Pretty cool. It's like a, it's like it seems like it's a little open world. Oh shoot, how did I jump? Off of here.
Oh no. Oh no. Fell in the pit. Oh no. Ow, ow. But if I fall in the pit, I should just go down here. I shouldn't die. Tiny Observer never played this one either, but I hear it's hard. <laughs> Definitely a classic. Yeah, it looks pretty, it seems pretty hard. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's a total classic. Made by David Crane. Uh, he said, I sat down with a blank sheet of paper and drew a strict figure. And I said, okay, I have a little running man. Let's put him on a path. And he drew two more lines on the paper. <laughs> and he said, where is the path? Let's put it in a jungle. So he drew some trees. Why is he running? Then he drew some treasures to collect and some enemies to avoid, and that was Pitfall. <laughs> and video game designing was different back in the day. Oh, I already used that vine, I guess. And then that, that entire process apparently took about 10 minutes, but then after about a thousand hours of programming, the game was complete. Well, I think he was the like, he programmed it by himself. <laughs> I love his ladder animation. <laughs> yeah, the climbing up ladder. Boop, 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 boop. Should be a sound effect for that. It's interesting. I just have like I kind of like how I have a bunch of HP. Whoa, I lost some for going down the ladder. Oh. That's an instant death though. The scorpion. Did I die? Oh, I died. Huh, I don't quite get how it works then. Let me see. Control Pitfall Harry through a maze like jungle in an attempt to recover 32 treasures in a 20 minute time period. Harry must maneuver through numerous hazards. Harry may jump over the over or otherwise avoid these obstacles. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Oh, those are my points. That's not my health in the top left. Under the jungle, there's a tunnel, which Harry can access through ladders found at various points. Traveling through the tunnel moves forward three screens at a time, which is necessary in order to collect all the treasures within the time limit. Oh. Yeah, so you gotta collect a whole bunch of treasures. And it sounds like, yeah, these underground areas just get you, like, like they skip screens. Oh no, damn it. Oh, those are my lives there, I have one life left. But the logs don't hurt me, they just take points away. Oh, can I jump on their heads when they're not? Oh. <laughs> When they're closed? Yeah. Oh no, I got eaten. End of that one. So, oh shoot. See, I lose points for that. So there's that, but then if I go through here. Yeah, see it skips, so it skipped like three screens there. Which you have to do if you want to collect all the time, all the treasure in the time of it. <laughs> There's a point depletion of life loss. I think uh, there. I think my lives are in the the top left, like that little stick. Oh, <laughs> I can't. Uh. Yeah, see, now I have zero lives. I think you only have three lives. Oh, man, this game is brutal. <laughs> but it's kind of neat that it's like open world. It just gives you a whole bunch of screens to run through. And, and then the treasure is just out there. Yes! See, so if I go down here... 
and go this way, I'll skip that snake screen. Yeah. But then there's these brick walls that are dead ends. I haven't found a single treasure yet, though. Got to find at least one treasure. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, good question, though. Like, if I go down to zero points, I think the game ends if it goes down to zero points. Now that I think about it. Uh, oh, no, maybe not. Maybe you just get zero points. There was a million uh, ports. It was on everything. It was on the MSX, the Commodore 64, the Atari 800, the ColecoVision, the Intellivision. And they say possibly because of the success of Indiana Jones, Pitfall was the best-selling video game in 1982 and the first quarter of 1983. People just wanted to go on adventures in the jungle, I guess. Those alligators are hard. <laughs> oh, it's totally supposed to be like a Tarzan. Oh, hey, I got a treasure. Oh, where did that pit come from? Is that supposed to be quicksand or something? Oh, I got one treasure. Don't know how I got there. By mid-January, it had become the top-selling game on the Billboard chart for seven weeks, much more successful than E.T., which, of course, was the giant failure of Atari. Again, this cost them way less than E.T. did. They paid $20 million for the license of E.T. Oh! Uh... A reviewer at the Science Times said Pitfall was a standout, a very original cartridge. It may and superb graphics and varied play action. It's pretty amazing graphics. No, that's really hard. Damn it! Because you can't, like, you can't just. Oh. Okay, maybe if I jump... Oh, that's all my life. Mm. People were mad at the time that the Pitfall, that the Atari 20... Uh, I mean, the Intellivision version of Pitfall didn't have an improvement in the graphics. Because the, the, everyone knew, everyone was like... And television can create better graphics, so why didn't Pitfall get a graphical overhaul? See, people were mad about graphics even back then. Uh, it's generally viewed as having created the side-scrolling platform genre. Although it didn't scroll. <laughs> so, it, But it did feature... It had a lot of the features of the game, such as the ability to travel up and down on multiple levels. And it was much longer than other Atari 2600 games, which typically only lasted a few minutes. Yeah. If I was playing games at that time, this I feel like this would be the one I would want to play. Most, most Atari games were just like little arcade games. Whew, I did it. Oh, that was stylish. Oh, there's got to be something good over here, right? It's weird how you always start on the left. Oh, right. Do the alligators work as a trampoline? And if you jump on their snouts when they open, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm going to try that. Give me like a launch. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Damn it. Watch me! Oh, damn it. No. You just fall into their mouths. Oh. <laughs> Tiny Azers is probably don't listen to me. <laughs> I liked it. I liked the theory. Um... Pitfall is considered one of the most influential games on the Atari 2600 systems. It introduced the jungle setting to video games. Interesting. I guess, huh. No video, yeah. Interesting. First jungle game. Many of the game's mechanics were used in games like Prince of Persia, I guess. By mechanics, you mean jumping and walking down ladders. Pitfall's success brought national attention to Activision, which had become the first third-party developer for a console. Wow! I didn't know that. <laughs> Oops. Activision was the first third-party developer. And this was the game that made them, I guess. I want to get past this snake over here. Ow! Yes! Oh, I thought... Oh, yeah! Oh, no! I want to get that treasure. Uh, what controller am I using? I'm using uh, Xbox, uh, original Xbox. We've got a old modded original Xbox that has all these old games on it. Look at that. That's pro pitfall playing. Oh, damn it. Oh, man. Okay, this is the hard part. No! Yes, okay. Now what's happening here? Oh, what is this? Quicksand or something? <laughs> Damn it! Tiny Observer says I'm so much better with a keyboard. That's interesting. Even for like platforming games and stuff? I'm I'm pretty bad with a keyboard on most games. I gotta say, even like, like I'd rather mostly use a controller even for first person shooters and stuff. I mean, some games like strategy games and stuff for sure. But yeah, I definitely can't play like platformers and stuff. The keyboard. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I panicked. Tiny Observer says, yeah, I know I'm the odd one out. <laughs> That's what she grew up with. Yeah, well, lots of people prefer keyboards for, like, first-person shooters and stuff, for sure. Oh, okay, sweet. I thought that was going to kill me. I think you're uh, 
probably oh how how did that happen yeah i don't even know if you're in the minority on that one lots of people oh man okay 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 yeah i got it i got the treasure yeah, if the, you know what? Like I could, I could see myself really enjoying this. At if this was, like, if I had an Atari Twenty Six Hundred as a kid, and this is the game I got, I'd be like, I think I did well. Where is, like, why is water just appearing? Oh man. Because you actually get like a decent little sense of progress, unlike most Atari games where it's just like they just want to, they were all ports of arcade games, so they just like, <laughs> damn it, they would just be all about trying to get coins out of you. Several companies saw the potential to follow in Activision's success. While some brought in experience, talent, and programming and marketing as Activision's founders had been. Numerous others tried to take the same approach using newly educated programmers and without a strong business model, and most of them were poor quality. And the volume of those games released by the end of 1982. Wow, that's crazy. So Atari released this game, and they were the first, first people to release a third-party game. And But by the end of that year, the, game, the, the industry was flooded, and uh, with tons of bad games, and that contributed to the factor towards the games crash of 1983. Interesting. Um, Crane produced an Atari 2600 sequel, Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns, in 1983. That sounds cool. Added caves and stuff. Uh, Super Pitfall, which was a reworking of Pitfall 2, came out on the NES. Pitfall came out on... Uh, in the arcades for Sega. Apple II. Pitfall the Mayan Adventure was closer to 16-bit platformers. Made its debut on the Super, on the Super NES and the Genesis. And Pitfall 3D Beyond the Jungle featuring Bruce Campbell as Pitfall Harry Jr. That's awesome. There was a Pitfall cartoon called Pitfall Harry. After one season, Pitfall Harry Prager and Donkey Kong Jr. were replaced by Kangaroo and Space Ace. <laughs> I didn't know Donkey Kong Jr. had his own show, too. Bruce Campbell, really? That's, yeah, I love Bruce Campbell. He's done some weird video games, actually. There's a few weird, like, like, like what? Bruce Campbell was in that? Um... I think another one came out this week. What was it called? It was a weird, like, PC game called Tachyon the Fringe. He was in that, I believe, too. Played some early platforms on PC when I was young, and other than that, I had a Sega Genesis. Oh, cool. Right, so you played like, lots of, probably, like, Commander Keen and stuff, and, like, that's where, where you cut your teeth was on the, on the PC. I had a cousin that had a PC with games on it. And so I kind of played some of the stuff on some of that stuff. Jazz Jackrabbit, that kind of stuff. But I had an NES, so that was, I was a big Nintendo fan. I just fell off the vine. I don't know you could. All right, I'll try going a different way. Die here. Let's see if I can 
can't find anything else. Nope, that's it. <laughs> I'll share the PC games I played, but they're so obscure, not sure if you want to hear. <laughs> we love obscure games on this show. Especially if they're really weird, but... Were they like kids games and stuff? I didn't play too many PC games, but Grimpen did. Grimpen would probably recognize them more than me. Monster Bash. That was one Grimpen always talked about. Lots of DOS games. Ah! Scorpion bit my toe. Ah! Oh. Oh man, I keep getting stuck here. Let me go left this time. I did play Mist back in the day, but I, I never understood it. I was always terrible at it. Whoa. What? Pitfall. What? <laughs> yeah, it's weird that you start on the left every time, because if you're going left, it, like, helps, but if you're going right, it screws you over. It will date you, but you don't care. Jill of the Jungle, Captain Comic, Ancient Empires, and of course a lot of early Sierra adventures, but the Sierra games weren't platforms. We played um, Phantasmagoria on the stream. I don't know if you ever played that one. Uh, that's the only Sierra game we played on the stream. But yeah, I didn't. I never played those games, but I know some of those games. Jill of the Jungle, I vaguely remember. Look it up. Huh. Oh, wow. No, I don't remember Jill of the Jungle. That's awesome. That looks great. That's awesome. It's cool, actually. I think like most of these games now, there's a place called the Internet Archive, uh, and they uh, uh, almost all of these games are playable on there now. Like they just have a huge archive of old PC games. Oh shoot, I went the wrong way. Uh, I mean, sometimes we get uh, for gaming history and stuff, we use that as a resource to find games. Holy. I loved, um, actually, yeah, one PC game I loved was The Incredible Machine by Sierra. Damn it. All right. Well, I think that's enough pitfall. <laughs> and that's it for gaming history. And that's it for the show. You keep catching me at the end of my of the shows.
Um, but thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the comments. Tiny Observer and McKinley and Basklands was here. And who else was here? Uh, I think Alex Casey was here. Uh, oh, Alex shoot. That's my, that's my own voice. Um, yeah, I'll be back on Friday, uh, same time, but, uh, Grimpen and I will be playing some Drawful, uh, so everyone, anyone's welcome to play with us as well on Friday, so it's a super fun Jackbox party we have on Fridays, so maybe I'll see you there, but if not, I'll see you, uh, next time we play Psychonauts, nice, love Jackbox, nice, well, maybe we'll see you there, uh, I'll post, we'll post on social media for sure, uh, Cool. And, uh, yeah, if not, I'll probably see you next time I play some Psychonauts. I'll make sure I'll let you know. And, uh, yeah, see you next time, everybody. Thanks for watching. And stay safe. Have a great night.